Mary Mead and welcome. Welcome to the realms of mysticism, the occult, and magic, where your possibilities are only limited by your imagination. Welcome to the Witch's Cauldron and discover the knowledge you seek. Gather round the cauldron and even stay for a spell. Brightest blessings to you. Merry meet and welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. My name's Paula. Today I want to dig a little bit into the astrology of what is called the U.S. United States Pluto return. I'm going to kind of preface this that while you may not live in the United States, often what happens in the U.S. because of its um, place in the world marketplace, its GDP, etc., 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 its debt load, the whole nine. Usually, what ends up happening in the U.S. has a trickling effect to other world economies. So, what's going on is not just going to affect the United States, it's probably going to start here and then the repercussions will start rippling out to other world economies. I'm going to do kind of like a split screen here and drop in a picture of what is called the U.S. natal chart. And what this is, is it is a natal chart set to July 4th, 1776 at 510 p.m. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And this coincides with the signing of the Declaration of Independence. When you look at the placement of the planets and the influences in the chart, you will see that Pluto falls into the second house of the country's economy and values. Pluto has between a 246 and 248 year orbit. So now it is returning to its natal place for the United States for the first time since 1776 and this is known as the Pluto return. If you recall some of your basic astrology, Pluto is the planet about death, transformation, and rebirth. Okay, that is a prominent theme for a Pluto return. It brings about permanent change, and it may be really uncomfortable. I mean, it can have really far-reaching effects because things tend to be stripped back to the bone um, and then rebuilt. It's not just about fixing and plugging the holes in the dike. It's letting the dike burst and then rebuilding everything that it takes out in its wake and rebuilding that dike to start with. Pluto, with Pluto being in the second house, it's, you know, directly, as I mentioned, directly tied to economy and values. So the death and rebirth is going to um, be about economic, financial, and transformation of values for the country. Now we have to keep in mind that Capricorn is linked to things like constitutional issues. So we may see some sort of call for transformation in the government and not just in the US. Like I said, usually any 
economic turbulence or economic issues of the world um, bigger economies like the US, like Russia, like China and Europe, um, they trickle down and they, they affect the other economies and the other markets throughout the world, okay? To put it in a little bit more perspective, remember that the U.S.'s Declaration of Independence that was signed in 1776 was its statement of British colonists breaking away from England, breaking away from King George, and pushing and fighting back on the taxes that were levied on the colonists because uh, Britain incurred great debt um, defending colonists and sending troops here during the French-American uh, War. It was the colonists at the time, many of them, were still loyal to England, but there were others who were, who felt that they had no representation. We had no seat in Parliament. Um, and so there, the big push was the taxation without representation because um, the colonies were not represented when these tax levies like the tea tax, the stamp tax, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, were levied by um, Britain to um, recoup what they had spent sending troops to the U.S. In the Declaration of Independence, you, there is a statement about freedom and independence from the old country or from England. And it's stated that all men are created equal. They have their rights given by God and those rights are for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There are many astrologers who believe that this theme of taxes, debt, controlling government that doesn't represent the will of the people, freedom, equality, and they're going to emerge again as we go through the Pluto return in the United States. I, I personally, as a um, American citizen, know that what is often reported by the mass media is not accurately reflecting what many Americans are feeling. A lot of us are pushing back um, against reforms and things that we find offensive. So I have a feeling, I have been saying this in my little sphere of influence with my friends, that uh, for probably about the last five or six years that I will not be surprised if there is not some type of civil war again uh, in the United States, if there are not states who will file to secede from the Union again. Um, there is a lot of talk. Um, some states have taken some first steps to actually get their state legislators to get things like secession on their books. I don't know what this will mean. I don't know what it will be called. 
I also think that there could be states like where I live in Virginia where certain areas may secede. Um, in Virginia, for instance, where I live, um, the preponderance of the population is in three areas. Northern Virginia, city of Richmond and its surrounding counties, and Richmond, um, Hampton, Virginia Beach. If, how can I put it, if a party can focus the, their efforts in those three markets, they can win an election because there's more population in those three areas than there is in the rest of the state. And th if they win those markets by landslide, they don't have to campaign anywhere else in the state and the other, you know, by landmass, 70% of the state is left out in the cold because the population is located in three separate areas. I would not be surprised if um, counties in Virginia secede again, like they did in 1861, um, when Westford, the counties that now comprise West Virginia, seceded from Virginia. I would not be surprised if that does not occur again. We also need to remember that influence of Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. And this is, you know, the power of the people. Freedom versus control. The old versus the new. It's pushing back against the establishment. Pluto is direct. And it moved direct, started moving direct. It went out of retrograde and started moving direct on the 6th of October. Pluto will become exactly conjunct natal U.S. Pluto on the 20th of February, 2022. But it's going to be hovering there for all of 2022 and 2023. I know that it's going to take, it's going to be painful again. I think it's going to take a lot of reconstruction. I think the economy will never be the same. I will not be surprised because the current administration and the current Congress that is in session is talking stupid amounts of debt. And I will not be surprised if the world goes away from the U.S. dollar as the standard. And it could go back to a gold standard. Gold is extremely high right now. It could even flip and go to crypto. Because Uranus is in Taurus. Taurus is money. Uranus is chaos and different and change. I'm not an expert on cryptocurrency at all. It makes me get sick thinking about it. Um, but I think it's going to cause a whole lot of confusion with uncertainty. There's going to be a lot of confusion about the finances in the U.S. because Neptune is in opposition of natal Neptune for the U.S. through 2022. And it's, you know, Pisces versus Virgo for that. We had the full moon the other night in Aries. It's in an incredibly tight T-square with the moon only six minutes from exact square to U.S. Pluto and transiting Eris, the Sun, and Mars all in square aspect as well. Okay, so this is like the perfect storm for economic turbulence. 
add to that, Pluto, solar arc Pluto, is still conjunct the midheaven of the U.S. chart, which is indicative of a fundamental change in government. And this kind of calls out that pushback, that constitutional matters and changes in government. It's going to really be rough in the United States from the end of 2021 through 2022 and into 2023. Some people have called into question the accuracy of using the natal U.S. chart uh, for doing anything like this. And this chart has been referred to for a long time. It's been out there forever and a day. So this is nothing new that I'm talking about. But if you look back to September 11th, 2001, Pluto was very close to exactitude in conjunct with the U.S. Ascendant, Natal Ascendant, which represents like extreme trauma and survival, okay, and a fundamental change in the U.S. identity. We need to remember back to then the U.S. And its actions in the Middle East following that event. And, you know, we just pulled out of Afghanistan after 20 years. And that was another show. But if you look back to 9-11, Pluto was at 12 degrees of Sagittarius. Okay? And that is linked to flight. On 9-11, Saturn which represents structure buildings was at 14 degrees of Gemini which is the twins so there you have Sagittarius and flight Saturn buildings Gemini twins hard aspects between Saturn and Pluto usually bring greater control and think about that after 9-11, there were greater controls put in place with regard to travel safety. There were limits on how many liquid and what kind of bags and et cetera, et cetera, um, that we had to, to go through that are now part of the accepted way of doing business. To add to all of this, we are entering into eclipse season and I will do another video on that here shortly. But we will have a total solar eclipse on the 4th of December 2021 at 12 degrees 22 minutes of Sagittarius which is within one minute of the U.S. Ascendant. So again, that is another indicator of a new identity, a new beginning for the country. If you recall, an eclipse usually indicates an eclipse of something that will be permanently gone. When you come out of the eclipse, there is something new born from it, okay, for the country. Venus moves retrograde at 26 degrees Capricorn on the 17th of December until the 29th of January. Venus usually is associated with relationships and in retrograde, when Venus is in retrograde, that usually shines the light on issues within relationships, right? especially where there is conflict for control within a relationship. But Venus is also linked to money. If you recall, Venus rules the, the sign of Taurus, uh, which is, you know, affiliated with money, wealth, material possessions, things of that nature. So Venus is, is tied to wealth and currencies. 
Capricorn is linked to banking, big business, stock markets, payment systems, things of that nature. On December 25th, Venus retrograde will be exactly conjunct Pluto at 25 degrees, 43 minutes of Capricorn, which is within uh, two degrees of the natal U.S. Pluto. It's also the third and final square between Saturn and Uranus occurs on Christmas Eve, the 24th, the day before, which is another indicator of economic turbulence, the old versus the new, structure versus freedoms. Venus will be conjunct Pluto for like three weeks. And that will run from the 11th of December to the 2nd of January, 2022. Venus will also be in Capricorn, which is one of the, you know, the, the serious signs, right? Capricorn, all serious. Venus will be there for all of January and February. Venus will be moving direct in late January. She will then be conjunct and catch up with Pluto again on the 3rd of March at 27 degrees of Capricorn with Mars exactly at that same degree. This is again another one of those indicators of new economic or financial systems being um, developed and then coming more and being more visible and more in place. Uh, in early March 2022. Now remember, if you listened to my last video, I mentioned Haumea. Through this time, Haumea is tightly opposing both transiting and U.S. Pluto, which then further highlights that giving birth uh, to the new Earth, that creation of the new the new earth order okay I mentioned in my last video if you have planets and angles in degrees around 25 to 27 degrees of any of the cardinal signs that's Aries Cancer Libra or Capricorn you are going to be feeling that need to transform and ascend in your life okay so with that, I am just, you know, Little Miss Polly Sunshine with all of this. Um, you might, well, might as well just call me the Princess of Darkness and Doom, I reckon. Uh, so with that, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you can, uh, start socking away a little bit of extra cash if you possibly can afford to do it. To put it to the side in case of an emergency or a collapse where your funds might not be available um, you might want to think about buying gold or silver or some of the precious metals um, as you know a backup to US currency so if you're in the United States so with that my friends if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below uh, what do you think about the U.S. natal return of Pluto and as I always say merry we did meet merry we will part until we merry meet again be well and walk in love and light everybody bye